Neil, you could bob, you could bob your head if you want. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so everybody, you got a little swag, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Don't start doing the wave, though. You know? <laughs> Check. Nice. Uh huh. Well, yeah. Something. We are the voices, they gave us no choices, you know how we coming We pay the way for tens and thousands, helping our citizens They hit us with fines and fears, but they cannot stop the vision We on a mission, just follow the clemency Committed to any discrimination for all of the nation And we just made history, yeah, we just made history Past the amendment for, now you see we are the voices F-R-R-C. We the leaders of the new school Let my people vote You know that we are the voices E-F-R-R-C We the leaders of the new school Let my people vote You know that we are the voices These hoes always pointing the finger When they know they doing us wrong Yo, yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Neil and Desmond podcast Our voice, that's what we call it Because we want to make sure that that the voices of people who are directly impacted by the criminal justice system are heard. We know that there's a whole bunch of folks out there with degrees and all kinds of stuff that be speaking on criminal justice. But you know what? If it ain't if it ain't us speaking, you know, there's a level of authenticity that is not there. And we want to make sure, man, that that we really elevate the voices of people that's been impacted because at the end of the day, they're the true subject matter experts. And so it's great to have you all back again. I'm Desmond Mead, Executive Director of Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, and... Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Neil Voles. I'm the Deputy Director of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition. We got a show for y'all tonight. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Man, what, 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 what you mean we got a show tonight? What you oh, talking? no, 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 no. Today, like, we like got a, a concert? show. Like what a you show. think? We doing a concert or something? Uh, yeah, it's it's as close to a concert <laughs> as you can possibly get tonight. Yeah. Cause, man, we got, yeah, because we got a guest and a half. <laughs> We'll talk about this, who this guest is, Neil. Well, you know, man, we got to amp it up a little bit, hype it up a little bit, but I'm just letting you know that the, our guest today got a gold record. Man, well, okay. we work with Jay Z, Lil Wayne, DJ nah. Khaled. Really? Oh, 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 yeah. DJ and a whole Khaled. list of folks. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, man, our guest, he's released six studio albums, including The Truth, which is certified gold. Right, he's worked with Lil Wayne, Scarface, Pusha T. I mean, Meek Mill, man, we got a whole list. And yeah. I just found out, right, uh-huh. he was in Paper Soldiers, which was Kevin Hart's first film. Really? He's a catalyst, yeah. man, international known star. And, and I could not be more excited and more honored to be in the room with you, man. And I just want to likewise, introduce likewise. everybody to the show, man. Say hello to Beanie Siegel. What up, what up, what up, what up? All them beans. Beans. Yes. Welcome to the Our Voice Podcast. Hey, listen, yes. I, I'm saying this, man, because you know, I'm trying to get points with my fam and definitely my wife. Man, the best thing about Beans is he coming out of Philly, y'all. Straight yeah. out of Philly. <laughs> you are getting points, man. I know the Philly crew. That's right. Go Eagles. <laughs> yeah. That's New Jersey. That's all kinds of people. Nah, man, but it, it, it's definitely an honor, man, to, to, to have a legend. Mm. Uh, a living legend in studio or uh, with us, man. I mean, Beans, you the man, bro. Thank you, you thank you, thank you, thank you. You the man. <laughs> <laughs> so how, uh, how is Florida weather treating you now, man? Um, a little different. A little rainy outside, but it's good. Yeah, it's better than that snowstorm up there. I tell you a that, right? A whole lot better. <laughs> oh, you dealing with snow right now, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, so welcome this, to Florida. <laughs> yes. Well, this is so cool, you know, Beans. One of the things, you know, I, back in the days when I first met Neil, you know, Neil started, like, ripping some public enemy on me, right? And I was like, whoa. He was, like, he was spitting verses that I didn't even know, right? Wow. I had to check my wallet right. to see if I still had my brother card on me. Yeah. Right? But, and so I know that just you being in the studio, man, that's something. I mean, and Neil? I mean, Neil is with it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so and he recognized, he recognized real, he recognized, you know, greatness. Uh, and definitely he know about a little bit about hip-hop. And so I know he might not say it, but he's definitely, you know, 
excited about you being with us in the studio, man. Appreciate yeah. that, Nell. Appreciate really that. Really grateful for everything you do, man. And and I, I, as somebody who learned a whole lot about life and what, what goes on when, in, yes. in, in places that different than what I grew up in, you know, um, yeah. I learned a lot through hip hop and, and, and the artists, folks like yourself, man. So I have been excited ever since you said you were going to join us. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, I want to just jump right in, right? I think we let's get it. So the piece out the way about, you know, back in the days, you know what I mean? What yeah. was your upbringing like? Uh, my upbringing, you know, of course, Philadelphia, <laughs> South Philly, um, single parent home, watching my mother uh, struggle to, you know, feed us, uh, clothe us, uh, keep a roof over our head, and, you know, I mean, I guess that's the story for a lot of us out there, you know, uh, coming from the inner city, which, quote, unquote, uh, the ghetto. So my upbringing, I guess, ain't no different from anybody else that came through the struggle. Yeah, I, I remember with my mom, man, I remember the shorty just watching the go from working as a waitress all night. You know? Yeah. And, and and that's why even like when I go to restaurants now, I tip real good. Yeah. I remember that it's the, it was those tips that actually put clothes on my back, food in my stomach, and a roof over my head. And then yeah. she would leave from that in the morning and go to Miami Beach to work in somebody's mansion, you know, uh, cleaning up their house and stuff like that. Yeah. And I always used to dream about, man, when I get a chance, man, I want to I wanna be like in the NFL or I just want to do something to whack a make a lot of money so my mom don't have to struggle anymore. You had yeah. those type of, those same type of thoughts too as well? No. <laughs> and let me tell you why. Okay, why? <laughs> my mother was a correctional officer. Oh, Come Jesus. Come on, really? <laughs> really? Yes. Oh. And, oh. and you can fact check this. She was a correctional officer in one of the most notorious county prisons in America which was Holmesburg Prison. Really? Yeah. So you would think that I wouldn't live a life to go do that because, I mean, my mother, I remember her taking me on, like, and a couple of my friends and stuff, we was acting up in school or, or cutting up, and she would take us on these, uh, which they got these programs now, they didn't have them, and I guess that was her version of a scared straight. A scared straight. Yeah. And I mean I, I remember walking down one of the uh the uh the, the, the prison uh you know halls uh one of the blocks and I'm she was mad because I'm looking in cells and I'm saying yo what's up man, when you come <laughs> home man. yo they go such and such and you know seeing people that I knew from you know the neighborhood in there and so it was kind of different. Man. And I remember <clears throat> I remember beatings that my mother used to give me before she worked at the prison. Mm -hmm. And then those beatings changed <laughs> oh. after she got the job from prison. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I guess it got worse. Yeah, it got a little different. <laughs> yeah, she was scared. Little, I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so well, yeah. I, I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm hearing this. I'm, I'm curious. How old were you when this kind of scared straight kind of thing she's 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 throwing your way happened? And um, and then what did she think as it kind of? It sounds like it backfired a little bit. Yeah, I, I believe I was anywhere between uh, eleven mm -hmm. and twelve because I uh, left my mom home when I was thirteen. So I, I believe around like 11 to 12 years old, we was, me, uh, rest in peace, my man, Tooch. Uh, I remember going through the block, seeing my cousins, and like, it was just different. It wasn't, I guess it, it didn't, it didn't impact me like she thought it would. Like, it would have scared me where I was like, oh, I got to straighten up. So, I don't never want to come here. Well, hold up. So, all right. So, first of all, so that was around that that was around the age time where you actually started getting in trouble in the legal system. No. So you got in trouble afterwards. No. Before. Yeah. Oh, gee. Wait, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. 
And so, no, because you just mentioned something, because I remember we was, um, I was in a conference or something, and they was talking about how sometimes stuff will backfire on folks, and rather than people actually being deterred, right, yeah. their heroes are people who've been caught up in the system, and then they think that that's cool, and and, yeah. and, and, and they just keep going down that path, right? And, and it's, it sounds like you, you said that that happened with you. Yeah, uh, my first uh, incarceration as a juvenile, I think I was nine years old. Nine? Yeah. Damn, nine. Nine years old. Jesus. What was that like? Uh, as I think back on it now, it was, I mean, it, it, it's crazy because I, I got younger kids and I look at them and it didn't hit me until I had, like, I, myself, oh my God, I would go crazy if my younger son and I'm, I got a 10 year old and a 12 year old and I'm like, man, I was in the system at their age, like, and they're nothing like how I used to be, you know what I mean? Nothing, you know, and it's like, it's scary. Right. It, 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 it. it it made me kind of reflect on like what kind of pressure and what kind of, you know, turmoil that I put on my mother at mm -hmm. that time, like being of that age and out there. Mm -hmm. you yeah, because yeah, you've got the system that's all right. set up that's like, hey, once you get in, man, they're going to hold you in there, right? So all of a yeah. sudden you're there at nine. Like what, right? what, what really like broke my heart. Like I remember my mother my little sister and my brother coming to see me because I was, I'm in the juvenile center, so I was only there for, I think, about eight months. And I remember my mom coming to see me and she brought my little sister and my brother to come see me at the time. And, you know, we wasn't, they didn't handcuff you or anything, but I had the, the little navy blue jumper and everything mm -hmm. on and they had to sit across the table and I remember when the visit was over, and I guess my little brother thought I was coming home. And I wasn't, and I had to tell him that, now nah, I got to stay here. And he went crazy. Mm. He He's lost thinking, it. oh, you're coming home. You're yeah, coming home. and he lost it. And that was like, it's weird because it kind of, that kind of hurt me more than my mother having to leave me there watching my little brother like scream and cry and holler like, no, why you gotta stay here? And it was like, at that point, that like really like touched me. Yeah, I feel you like, I mean, you're growing up in the system. Right? Yeah, it's like, it, was, it, it, it touched me to the point where it was like, I couldn't do this no more, like I gotta straighten up. Like, I can't put my little brother through that. Like, we shared the same bed. Right. So wow. those, we had bunk beds. So I can just, uh, I, I went back to my cell and thought about it. Like, him looking down and not seeing me on the bottom bunk. Like, that, like, touched me a little bit. Yeah. I can wow. feel it right now, man. Yeah. Wow. And then, I mean, how did, what did you do? How did you move on from that? Oh. Got in more trouble. More trouble. I believe it was from, uh, I think I had a little more freedom than I was supposed to have. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, coming up as a uh, in a household with a single parent and my mom, at work and she's doing double shifts mm -hmm. to take care of four kids. She's yeah. not there. So I'm in the street. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, telling my little brother, you'll keep the backyard door unlocked. And I would unlock the, the side door where I can come through the window mm -hmm. to get in the house. Cause once the door was, I, I been got my key taken from me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I thought my mom was going to work a double one time and I, I think I came in the house like 11 o'clock and I'm and 10, 11 there? years old. And she was saying, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I try to come through the alleyway and sneak in through. The, yeah. And 
lights out in the house. I'm like, all right, maybe she in her room. She sleep. And she was waiting in the living room mm-hmm. in the dark. <laughs> wow. Waiting for you to walk in, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what, so from there, I mean, what, at what point did you like get in the rap game? Was it like immediately after was, I mean, did you go through some more hustling? What no. called you to the game? Well, uh, Eventually, like, I got placed in a, uh, a juvenile's uh, as I got older. When I was about mm, about 15, 15, 16 years old, I had to, uh, I went away to a place called Slayton Farms. That's where I honed my skills for rapping. So when I came out, uh, you know, at that time, it's in the 80s, so crack just was like everywhere. Mm-hmm. So, I'm hustling, and I still knew how to rap, but it wasn't cool to rap around in, in, in my neighborhood, on my block. Really? Cause, yeah, everybody was getting money. So when I would go to them and be like, yo, listen to it, man, especially my little brother. At uh-huh. this time, he, I don't want to hear that rap shit. We, we get money wait, right. Wait, wait, what? I'm Fresh Prince, <laughs> like, big at that time? Yeah, it was big at that time. And then y'all had, what was, um... Um, we that, had the, that one group, the the, the, the roots. Two, no, not 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 even uh, the roots. Um, uh, Steady Lucini, Beat. Lucini, for from the Lu, oh, Lucini for from, from, from the sky. sky. But Let's I don't think they were. Yeah, they weren't from Philly. Oh, they though. weren't from. Okay. No, they okay. weren't from Philly though. So the Philly rappers that we had at that time, a little before my era, uh, we had Schooly D, we had Steady B, we had Cool C. Uh, the biggest artist, you know, Fresh Prince, and mm-hmm. uh, we had the Roots. Mm-hmm. But not to take nothing from them artists, they was they was rap artists, but they wasn't the artists that represented the struggle where we can't where mm-hmm. what we was used to. They wasn't, you know, on the ground like hustling. I don't. I don't think Will Smith. Nah, he went to Bel Air. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got yeah. it. He, he, he got, got in one fight and yeah, he, he went to Bel Air. You know what I mean? So he so, wasn't. He wasn't with Uncle Phil. Right? Yeah, he yeah. was a. Here, here, I, I'm feeling like this tension because all of a sudden, like you're messing with what I, I thought you were gonna say, where it's like, hey, man, rap kind of gave you like some presence gave you some you know status and you're actually saying that it was like no 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 I like mm. to do it because I like to do it yeah but the folks around me were kind of yeah, pushing I used to you to, to not do it to do it one person one of my homies Paco used to always tell me like yo you got it you got it and what really made me like take it serious a friend of mine was I call him my brother uh Calvin uh he got in some trouble with the, with, the, with the police. He got locked up, and they they handcuffed him behind his back and threw him in a paddy wagon on his stomach and rode around, and they wound up paralyzing him. Wait, hold up. Back up. Coward. Back up for a second. Time out. Yeah. You talking about back in the day. That sound like Freddie Gray. Yeah. This so the, that, see, this that's the, the kind of stuff that I was talking about, mm-hmm. right? That a lot of people now that... That they're 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 activating around the things that they're seeing in our communities now, and man, that stuff been happening forever. Yeah, ever. They've been cycling in and yeah. cycling, cycling. And so your partner got paralyzed. Calvin. Yeah, yeah, my partner got paralyzed. We used to hustle at, out the same. Uh, Damn. You know what they call bandos now, crack house. We used to hustle out out of there, and even an incident before that, we uh, we both were shot by an off duty police officer. Uh, he actually passed his gun to one of his partners that actually shot me, my friend Calvin, and the officer. So when we first got arrested, me and my friend Calvin was arrested for attempted murder on a police officer. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Yo, let's back that up. Yeah. Yeah. One police officer gave another police officer a gun. No, a civilian. A civilian. It's, yeah, a homie is, yeah. This police officer used to come on the block where we used to hustle at, and he used to shake us down. Yeah. Like, here, fine, here, dig in our pockets and pull out our money and mm-hmm. pull a pack out and ask us to make a choice. Mm. Which one was his and which one was ours? Wow. And depending on your answer, you in a 
back of that cop car. Wow. So most likely, the best answer that I used to come up with was both of them yours. Ain't none of mine. <laughs> yeah, that that's yours. Yeah. And then he had come around and leave or come back and put us on the wall and put the pack back in our pocket and have my money when I come back around here. Wow. Yeah. Damn, so that's wow. how he rolled. So he's the one who then gave his homie a... a yeah. Gun. He actually, actually in Toronto Affairs was, we didn't know at the time, was investigating him because he wasn't only doing it to us, he was doing it to uh, other people in different neighborhoods. So uh, that led up to us you know, we seen him one day, and my friend Calvin, he was a high head, and told the guy, yeah, you don't got that badge on now, and then that's what escalated the situation. He spun around, pulled his gun out, took another gun off his head, gave it to uh, a partner of his, and uh, it went down. Damn. Wow. And we only beat the case because the bullets that they pulled out of me and the bullets that they got out of all three of us came from a firearm that was registered in his name. So the attempted murder on the officers got dropped. So how long was that hanging out there, right? So they bring these charges against you, right? Some serious charges yeah. involved, involving law enforcement, right? Yeah. And then, you know, how long did it take before you, you had the proof that uh, you uh, what are, had already happened and you knew it already happened? Well, I was handcuffed to the... Uh, I was in the hospital for about two or three months because I got shot uh, twice on my leg and they hit the main artery and they was talking about amputating my leg and I ain't, I didn't want that to happen so I was fighting it. So I had to, I was in the hospital for about, I said a good three or four months. So my friend Calvin, he, he got out fast. He was probably in the hospital two or three weeks. He, Turner Ferris came and seen him. He settled out the court. But, my mind like, no, if he settled out and got, I ain't going to disclose the amount of money he got. If he got that, and they talking about cutting off your leg, I wish I would have settled out too because I, I wound up losing the civil, <laughs> the civil uh, suit. So um, after that, we had a target on our back mm -hmm. for even, you know, taking the uh, law enforcement to court and trying to sue them civilly. So, uh one day, they they uh they thought uh, my friend Calvin, he had drugs or a gun on him. He, he, he didn't have either one, and uh, which made him run. I don't know why he ran from him. But uh, we knew he had a target on our back from him. So they caught him. They cuffed, Like I said, they cuffed him behind his back, threw him in the back of a paddy wagon, drove him around, kept slamming on the brakes until he slid on his stomach in his head and it broke his neck and it paralyzed him. So from that point, uh, it was like, I got to do something different. Like if they did that to him, and I had a reputation for carrying firearms, like ain't no telling what they'd do for me. To me, if they catch me with a firearm, they gonna try to kill me. Right. Yeah. So that's what made me stop selling drugs was like, I gotta just do something. I gotta do something. I remember uh, running to a friend of mine, uh, Malik B from The Roots, and he was on his way to the studio. And I took a uh, took that ride with him. We went to the studio, freestyled on the track, and uh, a couple weeks later, he got back with me and was like, yo, you should come to the studio. And I went to the studio, and the track that we laid down it was just me and him on it. And next time I heard it was the whole Roots group on it. And I was like, oh, I might be getting down with the Roots. So I was excited with that. Heck yeah. Man. And they told me that my lyrics was just, I was too hardcore. And long story short, about a week later, I ran into another uh, partner of mine, Murder Mill, and he knew these kids from a. Uh, a different part, Southwest, uh, <laughs> Southwest Philly, and they actually had a, a contract with several different labels, and Rockefeller was one of them. Uh -huh. And they asked me to go along for that ride with them 
to go uh, meet with Rockefeller Records. And instead of the group getting signed to Rockefeller Records, they signed me. Wow. Damn, so you're there with the roots, right? And all of a sudden it's like they're saying, oh, I don't know that this is a fit. And that actually perpetuated you into a, another ride that changed everything to get you yeah. with Rockefeller. I mean, and this was like a month span. Wow. And so who who signed you from um, Rockefeller? Jay-Z. Jay-Z? Yeah. Jay-Z, Damon, Bix, yeah. collectively. Is a, yeah. And then that was... That was the start there. So when did state property come into effect? Well, <clears throat> I had the meeting, but I didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. They were like, yo, we're going to do this, do that. Okay. So they wanted me, they, they actually wanted me to stay in New York, but I couldn't because I left somebody with, some work? Elect yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, this is statute of limitations. Uh, right? yeah, statute of so, limitations. What is it? Allegedly. Just some work. Yeah. yeah. I left somebody with some work, and it was Friday. Uh -huh. And I knew if I didn't get back, I might not have seen him till yeah. Monday. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. no, nah, I can't stay. So I, which was my homie Paco that used to tell me. So I went back to him like, yo, that's where I was at. He's your encourager, right? Like, Paco's yeah. the one going, I like, you, like got yo. you got this. I just left New York. I just rapped for Jay-Z. I see Too Short was in there. They was doing a record called It's All Good a week ago. Mm. And I was more excited of getting Too Short card because it was like, damn, they go Too Short. And, you know, we watch videos and we see them. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Too Short the pimp. But he was in there with the, the, the pinstripe cream and burgundy suit with the croc, the gators on. And he had the two chicks with him, and it's like, oh, shit. That shit real. Like, he too short. And they're wow. pimping. And Jay was just, like, nonchalant. But as I, uh, you know, began to know Jay-Z, that just was his demeanor. He was just cool. He was like, I'm telling my friend, like, yo, yeah, I met too short. He was card. Look, yo, but the boy Jay-Z... They wanted me to stay up there. They talking about they going to sign me. He like, why you ain't stay up there? I said, nigga, because you got a 1500 pack. Where my $1,000 at? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, funny you wow. bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And then, but state property, get back to state property. Was that a play on just your prior experiences? No. What happened was with state property, all right, so after that day, about, a week later, I went to a club to a rap battle. And the rap, I, I don't know. The, I, I can't remember the amount of money that was uh, the prize for the battle. But I told them whatever the prize is, whoever win, I match that and let me and the winner of that oh, battle. You throwing down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me and that battle, uh, me and that person who won the battle, Whatever the prize money was, I match it. Mm -hmm. And they was like, let's go. And so I wound up rapping against the guy. He folded. Then somebody else said they had some money. And then, you know, I, I look up and I'm battling three people. And then there's another guy in the crowd. You know, he got his hat low and he's going crazy. And I'm like, yo, you can get it too. So I pulled him up on stage. And when I pulled him up on stage, I'm thinking... You know, I'm a battle against him, and he stood next beside beside me. Mm -hmm. And then it went from me battling four people to him on my side, and it's us two Ooh. battling these guys. And that person was Freeway. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Dang, that man. person wow. was Freeway. Wow. And then me and Free exchanged numbers. I was like, yo, I just met, uh, went up to New York, met Rockefeller if I get on. I got you. We exchanged numbers, and that was the start of building the state property. Wow. Yeah. And you're wow. talking about like key moments, man. Yeah, like key I keep moments. Hearing, right? like, like, wow. Boom, I get in the car, I'm going, or I'm on. The, I'm doing this rap battle, and wow. Yeah. Wow. So, man, all I, all I, all I can think about just hearing, you know, as you're going through the different parts, man, is that, man, you got some real legit street cred. 
Right, and I'm yeah. not talking about just, I ain't talking about the rap game. I'm talking about in this work that we're doing around criminal justice reform, yeah. you know what I'm saying, reentry, you know, because our organization, we, 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 you know, we did, we, we led the efforts to restore voting rights to over 1.4 million people with, with prior felony convictions. Yes. We fighting to make sure that they have access to jobs, housing, education, the whole nine yards. And more than anything, we trying to make sure that people are, are when they see people who may have some type of history, that they're not any less human than anybody else, right? Not at all. Right? And 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 so it's it's a fight. It's it it's really is a, a, a fight out there right now and and to you know, just to hear your story, right? Like not everybody can relate, man, you know? Not every you got people that can rap about it, but they ain't never really experienced, experienced some of the stuff that they rapped about. But man, this stuff is like right in line with the work that we're doing. Talking about number one, you know, nine years old, yeah. man, that's school to prison pipeline all yes. day. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we talk about uh, uh, um, oversight the police departments and how you know you can have police brutality, unnecessary police brutality. Yes, you know how you treat. I mean, handcuffing somebody, and so this is like. Freddie Gray before Freddie Gray. Yes. You know, you experience that getting shot. And one of the things that we also work on in, in some communities is around reducing gun violence, mm-hmm. right? And how, you know, we try to uh, uh, minimize the people who have a high likelihood of getting shot or shooting somebody, you know, mm-hmm. and really addressing those issues. And so all of the things that we work on, right, man, you, you just got – all the way cred with this, man. I mean, real life experience. Yeah, and, and I'm sitting there thinking about people watching this, people listening to this, right? Folks who can relate. Yes. Right. And and, and we said all the time around here that it's like, man, you can't dream what you don't see, right? Like, and and so you're you're like painting a picture for people right now who are listening that man, I, I can do it. You know, yeah. I can take that step. That moment in time that that you jumped in, you leaned into something. And, and then you hit that rocket ship, man. I yeah. know there's folks out there who are going to get encouragement from your story. I mean, a lot of people uh, just, I'm looking at this shirt, the shirt that I got on, you know, let my people vote. A lot of it is, you know, even me, uh, a lot of us may be ignorant to the fact, because I know what's not ignorant as, but ignorant not having the knowledge, because even me, as a uh, convicted felon, I thought that I couldn't vote. Mm-hmm. And is that like we spoke or earlier? It's information out there, and I believe that's the next chapter of my life. I remember in, uh, one of my biggest records, uh, "Fill It in the Air." I had a, a quote in there and said, uh, "I go through it so you wouldn't do it after me." And with that being said, is a lot of us as entertainers and, and, and artists, you know, I didn't think at the time that we did, but we have a responsibility to educate the people. We can't just talk about glorify the money and, you know, the the, the, the tangible things that we can obtain. But once you become, you know, a public figure and you got a, a certain level of status that where you got the... The, the, the people's ear. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that everybody should be a role model, but you should, it, 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 it's something there that you should be able to give back to the youngins. Like, yeah, well, I like I said. Yeah, I, I don't know if we know, because I remember the famous Charles Barkley, I'm not your role model, right? Yeah. I don't know if, if you no, know, there, that we would expect, you know, a person with status to be like a role model, right? Yeah. But I do think that you know, as a, a, a entertainer, as you know, a hip hop artist, that you're gonna educate people regardless. And yeah. so it's about what are you educating them about? About right? you know, you educating them about something that's gonna lead them down, you know, a path of destruction, or are you educating them about something that's gonna actually liberate them, right? And, and, that's and it why could be a, a mixture of the two or what, but yeah, you know, I think that yeah, there's no perfect person i don't think that you know anybody really should be like forced to be held as a role model that's something that they have to choose on their own but i do think that 
you know, if you're going to educate, you got to put some good stuff in there too as well. No, that's and that's why I said I go through it so you wouldn't do it after me. I mean, my grandmother told me a long time ago, you can learn from a fool. Yeah. Because he'll teach you what not, not to, to do. do. And I know I'm not the perfect person, but that's what I'm saying. Like, all the adversities and everything that I've been through, going to jail, being in the system at nine years old, I'm not glorifying any of those things. Mm. So I went through that so you wouldn't do it after me. And and I think that's the next chapter of my life, you know. And I believe, like, once, you know, you start uh, – understanding parenthood and 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 uh being responsible for others that uh didn't ask to be here not necessarily other people's children cuz i believe you know it's just starting a home mm-hmm. you know so once i started you know having children uh after the height of my career cuz i got different sets of children so you know me being Beanie Siegel at the height of my career and I missed out a lot on my older children because I was Beanie Siegel and I'm on tour and I'm traveling. But when I had, you know, that that moment or moments and times and years to fall back and I started having kids and I started reflecting, like my younger kids, they don't know who Beanie Siegel is. They don't understand really? that, you know, they, as they got older and, you know, they got cousins and stuff like, and they like, wow, dad, you made a movie before, you know, mm-hmm. cause they didn't grow up like that. I believe you got a responsibility, mm-hmm. you know, well, yeah. and that role model, that role model don't necessarily have to be, like I said, it could start in the home. Mm-hmm. Cause I I believe that's where everything starts at. Yeah, man, I gotta tell you, I I hear this and I'm I'm just like really encouraged and I I, I want to like human being to human being like yes. encourage you like this new chapter because you're sharing with us like a um, here's a story from this chapter here's a story from this chapter and now it's like kind of like man taking all this pain and putting it into purpose yeah right where it's like man I'm not holding myself up as a role model and I'm but I'm being authentic and that gives you like access to people who right like yeah people, people want that people are like man i I'm, I'm sick of the bullshit i'm sick of all the new consultant driven you know poll tested language to use i want to talk to somebody who's been through something because yeah. i've been through something and so like man i'm just really excited for what this next chapter is going to bring for you man i appreciate you sharing that man i'm Thank excited you. not only about him i'm excited about what the next chapter i bring for the movement that's right right yeah. you know and i i think that you know um as you're like now you talking about this next phase, right? Yeah. And, and how you connecting it to where, how could I use my experience yes. right, to stop others from number one, going down that, that path, but yes. then also use my experience to change conditions and, and maybe to change laws and, 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 and folks that implement the laws, right? Of course. How could you use your position to make a difference or impact, Right in our community as it relates to criminal justice and reentry. And I think that's a good subject that we can yeah, get into. And that's just to add to you, because I, I like I think it's a big statement, but like I think our country's in this new chapter. Right? And all of a sudden people are wanting to hear more and especially mm. on issues around criminal justice and, and, and realizing, man, that the systems we got aren't working. And if you look at people at, at, you know and understand how we fit into those systems, man, people's eyes are starting to awaken a little bit. But like you just said, the people, because a lot of people don't they don't understand it. Like, I believe is in, in this next chapter. It's my time to 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 educate. First, I'm gonna have to educate myself. Number one, I gotta educate myself, and that, and that's where I'm at with it. educating myself to be able to educate the people, because we are the people. The people are is the power. That's right. And a lot of us don't know that. Like, we got these laws that set in place. And the only way that we can change these laws is to get out, vote, get these people out the way. Because we we had this discussion yep. earlier to get these people out the way. We got the power to do that. Yep. A lot of us don't vote because we just think it doesn't mean nothing or 
we can't vote. Or some people think because uh, they had a, a, a record or a criminal, uh, you know, background or whatever. Or I'm not. That's not. That's false. That's right. You 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 can get out there and you can vote and you can make a change. That's right. And there's people who don't want folks to vote, right? So they're yeah. gonna <laughs> no, give, they, give us all kinds of info to confuse and you yeah, know keep yeah, people that, from from realizing the power that they got. And that's why I said information is key. That's right. Information wow. is key, and that's <laughs> I believe that's my job to first educate myself and educate the people. Let me ask you something. How hard how hard is it for you to like come up with with lyrics for a song. Now, I'm not going to ask you to freestyle. Right? Yeah. This ain't the Breakfast Club, so you don't have, yeah. have to worry about that. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, what's that process like, that thinking process? And I, I mean, because right now, right, you, yeah. you're you doing some work right now, right? Yeah. Right, and who you working with right now? Right now, I'm working with uh, Kanye on Donda 2. Donda 2, right? Ooh, and it's yeah. a possibility that you might be on that yeah. On that thing, right? Oh, so yeah, we. Yeah, so what? So what is that process, man? I mean, how how long does it take? How much work does it take for um, you? It all depends. I I I I will lie to you if I tell you, I got a certain ritual or or anything that I do. It just is a gift. Really, it's a gift. I don't I don't know how I do it, but you do it. But I do it. Man, let me tell you. So does it like just hit you in random moments where all of a sudden you're like, I got to stop whatever I'm doing and I'm going to put something down or I got to like work it out or? No, them, them moments hit me mm -hmm. during the process. Ah. Like when I'm listening to the music and I get into the, the music and I start writing and I might come up with something. I might have to stop myself like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a I, hook, man. I just said that. Like, what the? That's cool. You got me choking on that yeah. one. Listen, check it out. So, this, let me tell you what's going through my head, right? Yes. God knows what's, oh, what's be popping up in my head. But, so, you know, we got Brother Wavy Mob, right? Inspired. I think he's a great writer, too. Mm -hmm. uh, chilling in the house one day, all of a sudden, you know, because he, he's a he's a member of FRRC. Yes. Right? And he dropped, like, the intro that you hear. Yeah. The FRC, that's our theme song, right? He just went ahead and just dropped that, right? Just yeah. inspired by that. So my question to you, right, it's not part two of the FRC theme song. Yeah. But now that you have, you know, come full circle, right? Y yes. Do you think that we may see some like experiences or criminal justice issue type stuff show up in your music or in your lyrics? Yes. Ooh, and awesome. if you dig in there, it, 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 I have records that's out there that you can you can. Uh, well, when, when we finish doing this show, I'm gonna let you hear uh, a record that I recorded called. Uh, Still public enemy. Oh, <laughs> come on. That's right. Wow. Yeah, right come on, man. Oh, that's awesome. That's right. I know the Neil definitely love that. I just got all excited. Definitely, definitely got a, 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 a Freddie Gray. Uh, really? Well, well, let me. Thing uh, in there. And, but how is that? All right. So we, we going I, I want to definitely listen to that. But what yeah. I'm asking is that do you see. Uh, 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 like CJ reform, criminal justice reform, getting infused. Like I think when they had the uh, um, the the protests around George Floyd, yeah. I think um, uh, the you no know, little baby came Love out with, with an yeah. anthem, right? Yeah, right. And I thought that was like cool. I think Ti did something even a year before. He did a whole album, yeah, right. That nobody had really kind of pushed out there, mm -hmm. right? And so and, and so part of that is thinking. Do people in the industry think, well, man, I'm not, no, it's not going to make any dollars for me to be rapping about social justice or criminal justice reform or whatever, and that's why they're not doing it, or is it, is there something else? And and and, I mean, no matter what it is, is Beanie going to actually do it? You no, know, of course, in the future? of course. I mean, I can't see how they would think that because. Like we said, that's why I named the record Still Public Enemy. They made a whole career off of that. Mm. Well, and, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, I know you 
have engaged in activism around gun violence in Philadelphia, right? Yes. So, like, how, how did that come about? And how I, I'm intrigued because, man, I, I just love the creative process. I'm in awe of, like, that you got that gift, and it's really cool to see you use it. How did that come about? Like, how did your activism develop, and how does that infuse into, like, your music and stuff? Okay. So, you got these kids, right? And it's all, this was a personal experience. You got this corner going to war with this corner. And how they say they keep the score. So this has been going on for years. They don't even know what they're going because this was something that a few that was maybe 10, 20 years before they was born. Mm -hmm. So they just born into this beef Conflict. between these mm -hmm. two blocks and don't even know what they're going for. I know for sure two people that he's on this side, he's on this side. This person charged for a homicide from that group, this person charged for a homicide from that group. They both got life sentences. They've been locked up for, I'm going to say, about three or four years. They're in the same jail. They're in the same cell. Mm. They are best friends right now in jail for the rest of their life. Even though they're born into this beef, right? So they got this almost... Like hey, you just like got how, side. How how psychotic yeah. is that? You, you and that's what I explained to you. You you beef with this corner and y'all y'all kill each other. Then y'all go to jail, and then y'all become their best friends. Like what the, you know, they're the um. What is that? They're the program that that <laughs> that scene. I think it's birth out of Riverside, um, uh, California, like right up the street from uh, Oakland, uh, and the brother name is uh, Delvone. Right, uh -huh. uh, and he has a program that's now being implemented throughout the country, um, where they're getting people who are beefing with each other, and they actually get paid to go through a program, mm -hmm. right? And at some point, they even go on trips, like maybe to Europe, or maybe like if they're out of Cali, going to New York or something. And by the time you had these people that's beefing, by the time they get back. Man, they find out that they have so much in common they end up being boys. And, and and that's one of the things that Devon with this program is actually pushing, right? That a lot of this old time beef that people don't really even know the origins of can get squashed, man, if people could put down their guns long enough to be in proximity with each other, right? Yes. Right? And and I think that that, that is one of the programs that's been very successful. Uh, and part of the ceasefire, um, the real ceasefire yeah. uh, models that we're seeing uh, um, actually reduce uh, 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 gun violence in, in cities by, by huge amounts, man. I mean, but that's real, though. That's things real. like that should go on across the country because, I mean, I heard a saying called politics, politics. You got, <laughs> you got, we just sick of the basketball courts. We don't need no more basketball courts. We don't need no more. These people get in these positions and these offices and they, 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 uh, every summer is, is the basketball league and they clean up the park and, and they put up new basketball courts. I think it should be more programs like that, that bring these people together mm -hmm. to, to, to do something new. Like, it, it, like, I got a friend of mine. He's a uh, he's a construction worker. We came up with something. We didn't push forward strong with it yet because we still trying to build it and get it uh, together. But we trying to uh, get a program where as though we got carpentry, elect uh, people who, who deal with a, a electric. Uh, Masonry, plumbingry, mm -hmm. uh, roofing, mm -hmm. and we wanted to uh, build small houses. Mm -hmm. Sort of like if you if you have a mansion, you go out in the back and you got the shed. Yeah. But just imagine that shed it got the the working windows and the, the toilet and the and just build these small houses and have different people from different parts of the community that we know are going through these things mm -hmm. and giving them trades. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this way they can 
take that skill that they uh, did. First of all, they 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 bonding with each other because uh -huh. they can say, "Yo, look, we built this." Yeah. yeah. And then take that skill and move on. It gives them a certificate, you know. Whereas though they can have a certificate for plumbing, they had a certificate yeah. for for carpentry, and it gives them an opportunity instead of standing at the gas station and asking people, "Can I?" pump your gas and, and and do things like that. While getting a homeless person off the street. Off the street. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, that idea of like bringing people together and having like that shared project. I think about Amendment 4, man, like the, what you led and, and how you infused in the movement this idea that it's like, all right, we're going to go talk to folks at the, you know, at the Cowboy Bar in mm. Central Florida and we're going to meet as people, yeah. right? And it's amazing what can happen when all of a sudden it's like, man, you just start talking to people and people doing projects together and yeah. suddenly you, you see that we have more similarities and differences. So let me give let me put another spin on this, right? Cause I think this is, is, is amazing. Cause when we we're talking about, cause one of the things that we, that we always like to push out there, right. Is that if you advocate and fight on behalf of people with, with a criminal history, right. Yes. That not only do they benefit, but, Everybody, mm. benefits, everybody right? benefits, right? Them. Rather than just trying to lock people up and, and just keep perpetuating that cycle, right? That let's get the people that society has pushed to the side, and let's empower them. Let's let let let's give them training. Let's give them education. Let's give them uh, uh, jobs that where they can have a career. Yes, right, right. And when we empower them, they're able to do things that allows us to address other issues like the homeless issue. And now guess what? We're getting people on the streets jobs and we're getting people who are homeless off the streets. And you know what? If people are working, people are getting off the streets. Guess what? It's less crime. Cause there are studies that show that uh, a homeless person will commit a certain amount of crimes each year, right? Yes. A homeless person who's an addict, yeah, going to commit a whole bunch of crimes. And so the key in fighting crime ain't locking everybody up. No. No, the key is getting people off the streets, getting people in treatment, getting people educated, getting people trained. And so I think that that program, yeah, those are programs that we need to be elevating more of, right? But And it's also a mindset that yeah. when you look at, like, when you look at Pookie on the corner, that don't look at him with disgust, right? Look at him with, with some type of hope and intrigue and see, okay, how can I empower Pookie? Mm -hmm. and, and, and just to your point, you're right. Like, I think so many of us, I'm going to use the word just because it's a provoking word, is that so many of us are trained to think that it's like, oh, man, if, if you help Pookie on the corner, well, then it's going to hurt me or it's going to hurt my family, right? <laughs> when really it's actually, it's, it's like, no, but once we actually break through all that bullshit and all that yeah. training that, you know, people use to keep us divided, we actually begin to see it's like, oh my gosh, I mean, you get people trained, yeah. you get good jobs. The, reality, the whole I community be benefits. Yeah. I won't be Everybody. a victim. Yeah. I won't be the victim. Because you got to look at it like this. Even, uh, I remember speaking in the school uh, and we talked about this sir, officer that uh, an officer come and talk to a school and he got paid a certain amount. I did it for free just to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And while this officer is talking to these kids, they're looking at him like, you the op. Mm -hmm. I don't want to listen to you because you, you the one that's going to lock me up. Right. But to what Desmond said, if we can get Pookie off the street mm -hmm. and Get him educated, get him, uh, you know, a skill set. The other Pookie is going to listen to him and mm -hmm. follow his direction more than he do somebody else. Heck yeah. So that it'll yep. be a domino effect from that because they got something in common. They both was on the ground at one time. So when he see him and be like, yo, man, I got with this program and they cleaned me up. Well, how can you put me down? That's right. Yep, yep. That's right. That's going yep. that that'd be the trickle effect because they both got something in common at once. They both was on the ground. You can't a clean cut person that's suit and tie <laughs> to talk to a person that's on the ground like yeah, you need yeah. to do. Man, I ain't trying that. You gonna go home to your, you know, your yeah. beautiful wife, your two kids, yeah. the dog, big house, picket fence. Uh -huh. You don't really care. But when Pookie yeah. see Ray Ray. 
Street cred. That's yeah. street cred. And, and to your point, there's a lot of people who's like, hey, once they sign that bill or the legislation or whatever, it's like, oh, they, we're done. Yeah. Right? And it's like, no, 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 man. Oh, this thing's got to live in the community. I right? love that. I yeah. love that. He talking about signing the bill of legislation. Tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow, we're going to be in our state capital in Tallahassee. Say it. A whole bunch of folks. Right, that have a history. Yes. Man, listen, we man, we we getting folks from all across the state, man, listen, and they going to speak to these same legislators that that's writing these laws or whatever. We man, we about to have some conversation with them, right? Because not only can can our folks be like credible messages to the shorties on the streets, yes. man, we can be some real credible and real, I mean, authentic messages. To the lawmakers, to the policy makers, right? Mm -hmm. And so tomorrow is going to be a crazy day for us. Advocacy day, man. Wow. We yeah, we didn't get to do it last year because of COVID, but this year, man. Listen, tomorrow morning, early in the morning, I'm hopping on the bus, right? And it's a whole bunch of us, man, from from Miami, from Pensacola, from Dude, Key from West, Key man. West, from Duval. Oh, man. Orange I, wish, County, I wish I didn't Hillsborough. have to go back to California because I'd be I'd be frontlining with y'all. Oh, hey, listen, but now we got we got some other opportunity for you, bro. Oh, I'm but all in. Tomorrow it's going oh, down. That's awesome. It's I'm all down. in. It's official. <laughs> it's official. I'm a part of this right here. Right, oh, FRC. Yeah, you hear that? You hear that? <laughs> I'm a part of this right here. Straight from his yeah. mouth to y'all. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah, but if we, yeah, we can, are. If y'all can listen to the music. When I was young and I was wild and y'all followed me and listened to the music when I turned up, th listen to me now because this is way better information that I can give you now that I gave you then. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Let wow. that new chapter take yeah. fruition, man. That's what's up. That's it. That's it. Still public enemy. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Still public enemy. I go through it so you wouldn't do it after wow. me. Wow. That's what's up. That's man. powerful. So where we at, man? That, I, that all of a sudden, he got me. I was like, man, yeah, like <laughs> drop the mic moment, y'all. I mean, yeah, you know I mean, we got Beans himself. Beans Siegel say that, yeah, he rocking FRRC. He already in uniform. Yes. But let my people vote shirt on, right? But the, just to know, man, that we got, and, and that's what I meant. That That is our membership. You know, people who have been caught up in the system and people who, have loved ones that's been caught up in the system. Yes. You know, it's us that can save us, right? And when we can get folks, man, from all walks of life, you know, all persuasions, all backgrounds to come together around the issues around mass incarceration and, and reentry. Yes. Man, there's nothing that we can't do, man. Yeah, and the, the, ones, end, yeah. the ones that's incarcerated, don't think you don't have a voice. Mm. Call home. Talk to your folks. Yep. Tell your folks to vote for such and such. If y'all know this person is riding for y'all and y'all can get out there, don't think because you behind them bars you don't got no voice. You got a voice. Yeah, we got, remember we had the story with, we had Norris on uh, last year and Norris told a story about, you know, how, you know, because he came out of Angola, right? Mm -hmm. And and it was it was a lady that, that helped free some folks out of Angola that ended up running for judge. Wow. Man, them cats in Angola got on that phone and said, Mama, I know she white, but she one of us. See? Right? She one of us. And, man, that lady ended up getting in office, man. And and, and the, the moment, the, the part that really gave me chills is when she was getting sworn in as a judge, mm -hmm. they handed her a gavel that was crafted in prison in Angola. Wow. And the message was very clear. Short and sweet. Remember who got you here? Rule justly. Wow. You know? And and so, yeah, cats, man, even though you may be incarcerated, right? And you have somebody that's incarcerated, their voices is not lost. That they, man, listen, they got an email. They got a, uh, a mailing list. They got a phone list. Everybody on that phone list is some kind of entry point into a person that's either registered to vote or can be registered to vote and can cast a ballot and make sure that we're electing people who believe in reform, people who believe in, in treating people with dignity, regardless, yes. right? Regardless of what they did, there's still a human being. There's somebody's father, mother, sister, brother, cousin, aunt, uncle, mm -hmm. right? They're still human beings 
And when the person served their time, they paid their debt, man, we're supposed to make sure that they get out, they be able to get good jobs, good careers, housing, education, all that stuff, mm -hmm. right, to enhance sex, successful reentry. And so... No, we 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 with that now. Yeah, we and, with and, that. and so yeah. much of like the how you do that is built on this idea that like man, the people closest to the pain, right, are also closest to the solution, and, and sometimes farthest from the power. So wow. we got to build that bridge, you know, to build that power so that that the voices can be heard wherever they are. Like you said, man, folks, so, folks are incarcerated, man. Their voices matter and, and and can be a part of this process. So, beans, how impactful do you think hip hop mm. artists can be? in making change? For one, uh, by their voice, uh, charity is a big part. You got these, all these artists, you got people out here that, uh, that come out and they're stuck on probation or parole because they, they didn't uh, pay off their fines yet, so that 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 hells them up. They could have been off probation or parole two years ago, but they don't have the means and the resources. Mm -hmm. So if you really believe, or if you really with the cause, and the people that out there and that talk this money thing, it's nothing for you to take a, a forty-five minutes or half an hour out your day and had these concerts and not just part of the proceeds had they said this is a, a give it up one day give it up and you got people out here like Desmond wow. Means and other people donate that money to them people so your folks can pay off their fines and, and, and get back out here in the society and grow and be uh, prosperous people into your society. Y'all can do that. Hey, so, you know me, I'm, I'm like with these crazy ideas, right? So we getting ready to drop Donda 2, right? Right? And you on it, right? We got to find, you know what? And didn't, um, uh, 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 um, didn't Kanye just hook up with Drake and they did the Free Larry Free Hoover. Free Larry Hoover, yes. So we got, so here in, 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 in Florida, you know, we pass Amendment 4, we give people the right to vote, and we know that voting is power, right? And we know our legislature said people got to pay fines and fees, right? Yes. All right, and so we, we've, like, we've raised over, like, $30 million over the years, and we have paid out that $30 million paying wow. off people fines and fees. And so I'm thinking in my head, man, if I'm dreaming big, right? Shoot, man, we get, you know, Jay and Kanye and Drake. Yeah. And do two, three concerts in Florida. Free all the Hoovers. Right. And, and there you go. Free all the Hoovers. Free all the Hoovers. Right. Right. To make free, just give people straight access to democracy, help empower communities. Let's do a concert, three concerts in Florida where all proceeds go directly to paying off people fines and fees. Because come on, we all, we all what know what that, that is, man. Fines and fees are like anchors. Holding people yeah. back, right? Yeah, so yeah, it could be like eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. You're not going. That's right. You're not going I'm, I'm trying to go build something. <laughs> that China. invisible nah, ball yeah. and chain. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Yep. There you go. Yep. Yeah. So I, th that's a great idea, man. I would love to explore it, but well, more than anything, man, I, you know, I think it, it, it's so important that that people who look up to artists like you get to hear the real side, get to hear, you know, not the not the side that's glammed up, but just yeah. the real rugged. Right and and get to hear your experience, right and understand that this stuff is real. This ain't and this stuff ain't new, right? No. Th this stuff is definitely not new, man. Going back to this, you know, nine years old, man. Right. I yeah. can't I can't get that out of my head. Yeah. Right. Man, you're little. I can't get that out of my yeah. head because I look at my own kids and they're a little bit older. Than, you was like, man. So I think that. What's so important is like having a voice like yours, right? And seeing how we get more voices, right? To just like keep it real and, and get this, like the info and the, and, and the knowledge out there, right? And then also show people that listen, it's not just about knowing about it, but it's about what we can do about it, right? 
and, and, and it don't take, let me tell you something. It take way more energy to draw up a big old postcard, to go out to uh, an event, Protests, Protest, all yeah. that stuff, run back and forth. It takes way more energy doing that than it does to fill out a voter registration form mm -hmm. or to fill out a mail-in ballot or to go and actually vote, right, in person. Yeah. It, 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 so that right there, and you know what? If more people would show up to just vote, a whole lot of things have changed. Yeah, so let, so let me give like an example yeah. of the power of that, right? We're sitting here in Orange County, Florida, mm -hmm. right? Years ago, Orange County, Florida direct filed more people than any other county in the state of Florida. More juveniles. More juveniles, yeah. yes, yes. So, Number yeah, one in the state. Right, so direct filed, right? And now, because of the vote, right, the right people got put in office, and now Orange County is direct filing the least the number least of amount. people in the state of Florida. Like, and that's power, and that's the kind of change that we need to see. To segue off of that, the not nine years old, like I said, I was incarcerated for nine years old, and you got to understand that, uh, I'm trying to think, as I just read this, as a, as, a, as a man, especially a black man, your mind isn't even developed mm -hmm. yet until you're about mm -hmm. anywhere between 22 and 25 years old. So when I was nine years old and I got incarcerated, it wasn't for nothing violent or anything like that. It was because it was my third time getting caught stealing out of supermarket. I wanted to get that out of hunger. Right, right. So all of a sudden there's this like three it was strikes. Or what, you know what I'm saying? I can see the language now that created that system, right? Yeah, you yeah, want to yeah, be yeah. like, I'm creating a safe community. I was not, three strikes. yeah. I yeah. just wanted yeah. to, to clarify that I wanted to. The nine-year-old that was out robbing and doing that, yeah, I was. Man, if a nine-year-old was hunger. out robbing, I know something, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I out remember of hunger. in Florida, I think, I think one shorty threw like a Snicker bar at his classmate, and he got arrested for assault. You yeah, know? that yeah that, that listen, man, I, th there is no excuse for locking up. A nine-year-old, right? You know, and and I think we had an incident in in Orlando where a police officer was putting cuffs on like an eight-year-old, right? And he ended up, I think, ended up getting fired because of that, right? And and that that is so traumatic to that child. And it's, it's all, but it's also a primer, mm -hmm. priming them. Right. You know what I'm saying? The the to to continue to be caught up in the system. And so now, nah. but listen, beans, man, listen, it's been, man. I don't know where the time went, man. Whoa, are we I don't know where, wow, yeah. we are at the time, man. Yeah, we we've been we've been rocking this thing wow. for quite some time, man. Um, I want to personally just thank you, man, for for coming in yes, in sir. person in the studio, our voice studio podcast. You know, uh, hanging out with Neil. Neil gonna be talking about this name for 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 at least another year and a half. Yeah, that's right. You know, my, my status just went yeah. up, man. And, and <laughs> if I if I could just say thank you personally, and and and, and I, I'm a spiritual person, man. Like this whole new chapter thing that you got going on, man. Yes, I sir. wish you all the luck in the world on that, man. I, I could feel that there's something really thank you. I really appreciate that, there, man. So yeah, man. Appreciate really that. appreciate you coming, man. So listen. Y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed the conversation. Yes. Um, and this was like real. Uh, uh, it was a slight departure from from uh, our normal shows, man. But this was like what was up, getting it blood raw from the man himself, Beanie Siegel. Uh, Beans, man, thank you once again. Y'all make sure that y'all uh, tune in. And what we might be having, I mean, matter of fact, we've been telling folks that we about to just do some crazy stuff this year, right? Yeah. And we just, I think we started off on a bang. Heck yeah, thank yeah, you, man. We, we got our own new season happening. We yeah. challenge, we challenge our, our production crew, right? Zay yeah. and, and Brandon. We told them, as a matter of fact, even our listeners had to tell them they had to step it up, right? Uh, and they're supposed to be getting like some like some names and I believe it was goats and yeah, we got goats. goats. We got the goat. Come on. Yeah, so they go. stepped up. So Brandon and shout out to Brandon and shout Zay to Brandon. for stepping it up, Zay. right, and locking the goat down. You know, yeah. that's what's up. Now the pressure's on for you to keep that going, right? <laughs> and I pressure everybody else out there that say they got a voice and claim they got a voice, put it to use. 
No more lip service. Let's go. That's right, right. And we got Let's a place go. right here if you want if you want to find some work. We got that work, man. Yes, go. Right. Making sure that 1.4 million people get the right to vote and, and, and be able to exercise it. And we make sure that over six million people who live in Florida with some type of criminal history have access to jobs, education, housing. Man, preach it. Preach That's right. It. Thank you. Yes, sir. Really Thank you. So, hey, we might as well just go ahead, you know. Oh, oh you're going to tell that on again. Yeah, right? you might as well. People vote. You know that we are the voices.